Disney Princesses versus Real History, Part 2. Each Disney princess movie is set in a different time and part of the world. For many children, they are a first glimpse of history and cultures outside of our own. But have you ever wondered what life was really like for your favorite Disney princess? Let's take a closer look at each of Disney's 16 animated princesses, including the latest edition, Asha, to determine where and when they are most likely set. Sometimes this is simply stated during the opening song. Sometimes we have to dig deeper for clues. Then I'll match each iconic princess to a real-life royal woman from the same time and place, so we can get a sense of what life was like without witches, curses, and singing animal sidekicks. In some cases, there are eerie similarities. Louise of Prussia spent much of her youth locked away like Rapunzel. Nafanua of Samoa went on a quest to help her people like Moana. And Princess Eugenie of Norway refused to marry a man she just met like Elsa. So put on your ball gown and tiara or strap on your armor and let's compare Disney princesses to real history. Tiana from 2009's The Princess and the Frog is the third of four princesses based on a Brothers Grimm character. But rather than vague Europe, this film is placed in New Orleans, Louisiana in the 1920s. This makes Tiana the most contemporary Disney princess. Mardi Gras, jazz, voodoo, and other elements of Crescent City culture play prominent roles in the film. But the animators dropped the ball, gown on Tiana. Rather than dressing in the iconic drop-waist silhouette of the 1920s, her signature look is a hoop skirt, more in line with the earliest princesses. Tiana was the last Disney princess to marry into royalty, though Prince Naveen's Kingdom of Maldonia is intentionally vague and not based on a specific real place. Unfortunately, matching Tiana to a historic princess is a bit of a challenge, as there were no black American women to marry into royalty in the 1920s. However, there have been two in more recent years. Meghan Markle, who wed Prince Harry of the UK in 2018, is fairly well known. But have you heard of Princess Ariana Austin? She was born in 1984 in Washington, D.C. to an African-American professor and a Guyanese executive. She worked hard, earned a master's degree in writing from Harvard University, and embarked on a career. In 2004, Ariana met Prince Joel DeWitt McConnon at a nightclub. He is the great-grandson of Haile Selassie I, the last emperor of Ethiopia, who lost his throne in a coup in 1975. The couple wed in 2017 in an Ethiopian Orthodox ceremony. They run a production company focused on filmmakers of African descent. If we want to look at someone non-royal who matches Tiana's location and era, as well as her talent and determination, chef Lena Richards is a great match. Lena was born in 1892. Her mother worked as a cook to a wealthy white family, and Lena helped her after school. After she graduated, the family hired her and were impressed by her talent. They paid for her to attend culinary school in Boston. She returned to New Orleans in 1918 and started a catering company. She married Percival Richards and had a daughter, Marie. Lena worked hard and her business grew. She was hired to run kitchens in ever more impressive restaurants. When Marie graduated college in 1937, they started a culinary school together to educate young black chefs. Lena wrote the best-selling New Orleans cookbook and opened her own restaurant, Lena's Eatery. Next, she started a frozen foods venture and her Creole meals were shipped across the country. In 1949, she became the first black host of a cooking show. Lena Richards' New Orleans cookbook ran twice a week for two years. She split her time between her show and her restaurant, The Gumbo House, until her death in 1950, age 58. Rapunzel from the 2010 movie Tangled was the first princess to be 3D animated rather than hand-drawn. She is also the fourth princess based on a grim fairy tale. The story from their 1812 book, Children and Household Tales, was in turn adapted from a French tale called Persinette by Charlotte Rose de Camon de la Force. 
published in 1698. In the original, Rapunzel is the child of commoners who marries a prince. In the Disney version, she is the long-lost child of the king and queen of Corona, a fictional, vaguely European island kingdom. While Rapunzel's dress is more party city than historic, the architecture of Corona gives us the best hint as to the setting. Most fans agree on northern Germany. Some say 1780s, but as Rapunzel makes a notable cameo in Frozen, that would set her in the 1840s. In either era, most of the coastline of what is now Germany and Poland was then the Kingdom of Prussia. Germany was not united until 1866. Friedrich Wilhelm III ruled from 1797 to 1840. He and his wife, Louise of mecklenburg strelitz had three daughters. Princesses Charlotte, Alexandrine, and Louise. Their childhoods were marred by the Napoleonic Wars across Europe, and being locked up in a tower would seem quite familiar to any European princess of the time. Their lives were highly guarded and dictated. None of the Prussian princesses had the freedom to go adventuring on their own, or fall for a highwayman like Flynn Rider. All three married fellow royals. Charlotte wed the Emperor of Russia, Alexandrine the Grand Duke of neighboring German state mecklenburg schwerin and Louise a Prince of the Netherlands. The sister who most resembles Rapunzel for me is the youngest, Louise. Aside from the lavender dress, she had a kind and compassionate personality, kept in close contact with her family after she moved to the Netherlands to wed her cousin, Prince Frederick, and was not afraid to share her opinions. Louise had four children, including Louise, Queen of Sweden and Norway. She died in 1870, age 62. One could also make an argument for Empress Sissi of Austria, who was famous for her long, glossy chestnut hair that reached her ankles. But as she was born in Bavaria in 1837, her era doesn't quite fit. Merida from 2012's Brave is the first Disney princess film to be an original story, not based on an existing story, legend, or historic person. Brave is unquestionably set in Scotland, sometime in the Middle Ages. Filmmakers said they took elements they liked from the 9th to 12th centuries to create this fantasy version of the Highlands. It was during the 9th century, 843 to be exact, that Kenneth I MacAlpin united the many clans under one Kingdom of Scots. The princess from this time range that we know the most about is Matilda, born in 1080, to King Malcolm III. Her mother, Margaret of Wessex, later Saint Margaret, was loving, well-educated, and deeply pious. Princess Matilda was educated at an abbey. She feared the Norman Knights, who, in 1066, had taken over England and were encroaching on Scotland. She considered becoming a nun to avoid being married to one of them. But, unlike the Disney movie, she was not allowed to shoot for her own hand. Her father betrothed her to King William II of England. Just before the wedding, Scotland and England went to war. Matilda's father and brother were killed in battle and her mother died of grief. After a messy conflict, her elder brother, Edgar, became King of Scotland. In England, William's brother murdered him and stole the throne. He then re-entered negotiations with Edward for Matilda's hand, and they were wed. Henry admired his bride's intelligence and didn't mind that she dressed modestly and refused to paint her face as other ladies did. As Queen of England, Matilda gave generously to the poor. She built public lavatories, a bathhouse with piped-in water, and a leprosy hospital. She attended mass barefoot at Lent and washed the feet and kissed the hands of the sick. She was a patron of arts, music, and architecture, and built the first arched bridge in England. She was much more popular than her Norman husband and served as regent several times while he was at war. She traveled the country extensively to broker peace amongst her people. She had a son, William, and a daughter, Matilda. Matilda of Scotland died at just 38 and was buried at Westminster Abbey. Her son died a year later in a shipwreck, so her daughter, Matilda, became the first Queen Regnant of England. 
Merida is one of my favorite Disney princesses, and I long to see the beautiful country she called home. If you share my desire to visit the Highlands, then join me on my historic group tour of Scotland from May 15th to 21st, 2024. Use promo code HOLIDAY50 to get $50 off your trip. That will buy a lot of haggis, or shortbread cookies if you prefer. Over seven days, we'll experience the highlights of Scottish history, from lowlands to highlands. We'll see the honors of Scotland at Edinburgh Castle, Bronze Age burial chambers at Balnurin of Clava, Elendonan Castle, the Living History Highlands Folk Museum, Dunkeld Cathedral, the mystical Isle of Skye, and so much more. We'll try delicious Scotch delicacies and unwind over a whiskey tasting. And most amazingly, we'll do it all with a group of fellow history lovers and a local guide. Click on the link in the description to reserve your place on this historic trip today. Use promo code HOLIDAY50 to get $50 off your trip. I can't wait to meet you in Scotland. Elsa and Anna from the 2013 film Frozen are Disney's first princess duo. Frozen is very loosely based on the fairy tale The Snow Queen, written by Hans Christian Andersen in 1844, shortly after he pinned The Little Mermaid. But Frozen departs far more from the source material than previous Disney movies. Most notably, the Snow Queen was a villain. Anderson's story presumably takes place in his homeland of Denmark. But Disney animators moved Elsa and Anna's fictional kingdom of Arendelle into one of the famous fjords of another Scandinavian country, Norway. The landscape, artwork, architecture, cultural elements, and most of the costumes adhere to that setting. They also suggest the story takes place in the 1840s. This is confirmed in Frozen 2, when a map with the Roman numerals for 1840 is seen. Frozen 2 also takes inspiration from the Saumi people of Lapland, northern Norway, Sweden, and Finland. The problem with matching Elsa and Anna to a Norwegian queen or princess from the 1840s is that Norway didn't have its own monarchy during this time period. Back in 1397, Queen Margrethe the I of Denmark united Denmark, Sweden, and Norway into the Kalmar Union. It was dissolved in 1523, and Norway was stuck with Denmark. In 1814, Norway was taken over by Sweden. Thus, it was under Swedish control in the 1840s. King Oscar I of Sweden and Norway's daughter was Princess Eugenie, born in 1830. She said of her childhood, I never had a girl of my age for a friend or playmate. But that wasn't because her sister was concealing ice magic. Eugenie was the only sister to four brothers, so she built snowmen with them instead. In her teens, she delighted in attending parties and balls. She traveled Europe and received proposals from princes of France, Denmark, and Germany. But she didn't want to marry a man she just met and turned them all down. She preferred what she called the sweet, independent life, and she never married. Instead, she composed music, painted, and wrote. When she was 22 and staying with her family in Oslo, they all came down with typhoid fever. Her brother Gustav died, and Eugenie's health never fully recovered. She committed herself and much of her fortune to charity work. She founded orphanages, hospitals, an animal protection society, and supported poor and blind students. After years of ill health, she died in 1889, age 58. In 1905, Norway gained full independence from Sweden and founded its own monarchy. A Danish prince, Karl, was elected king, and he took the Norwegian name Håkon VII. Unlike in Frozen, a woman would not have been able to inherit the throne of Norway for most of its history. But in 1990, the succession law was changed, giving women equal right to inherit. Today, the second in line to the throne and likely future queen of Norway is Princess Ingrid Alexandra. Moana the title character from the 2016 film lives on the fictional Pacific island of Motunui. 
The story is based on the demigod Maui, who appears in mythology across Polynesia. He is said to have pulled the islands up from the seabed with his magical fish hook, among many other great feats. The character of Moana is not part of the Maui tradition, but was created by Disney. Animators took influence from islands across Polynesia when creating the story. However, they did base Moatenui's design and Moana's ceremonial headdress on the island of Samoa. Between 3000 and 1000 BCE, people from Asia settled in the western islands. Then they stopped voyaging for about a thousand years. It's not clear what caused this halt, which is known as the Long Pause, though it was more likely related to climate or cultural shift than a giant lava monster. Around 1000 CE, voyaging began again, and the islands of eastern Polynesia were settled. This puts Moana somewhere around the year 1000 CE. During this period, the islands, divided by vast oceans, were in fact well-connected by trade, language, and culture. Wayfinders traveled on outrigger canoes from island to island. Their culture was matrilineal, and women, like Moana, played prominent roles in society. However, identifying a royal woman of Moana's era is a bit of a challenge, as Polynesians carried their history via oral tradition rather than written record. A semi-mythological, semi-historical, Alei, or Queen of Samoa from around 1200, was Nafanua. According to legend, she was the daughter of Princess Telafiga, one of the conjoined twins from Fiji who brought the art of tattoo to Samoa, and Savisi Ulio, a demigod and chief of Pulutu, the underworld. Nafanua was a brave adventurer who had an affinity for water. At the time, her island of Savai was divided by war. Nafanua was on the east. When a chief of the west side caught an enemy, he forced them to climb a coconut tree upside down. Nafanua's uncle was captured and forced into this humiliation. To avenge him, the warrior princess cut down the Tao tree and made from it four weapons. She attacked and decimated her enemies. The battle only stopped when a wind blew open her shirt, revealing her gender. Her enemies were ashamed to have been beaten by a woman, and they laid down their weapons. After her victory, Nafanua claimed the four major district titles and became Alai or Queen of Samoa. Though much of her story sounds like the legend of Maui, Nafanua was a real person involved in the civil war of Savai. Today, she is revered as a goddess, and many noble families claim descent from her. Churches, boats, and an underwater volcano have been named in her honor. Raya from the 2021 film Raya and the Last Dragon is an original Disney princess who is not based on existing legend or fairy tale. The film is set in a fantasy land called Kumandra, inspired by the southeastern Asian cultures of Brunei, Singapore, Laos, Thailand, Timor-Leste, Cambodia, Vietnam, Myanmar, Malaysia, Indonesia, and the Philippines. The film received praise for celebrating Southeast Asian people and cultures, and criticism for lumping so many distinct cultures together, and casting several East Asian rather than Southeast Asian voice actors. Because the movie attempts to cover so many distinct cultures, and has no clear indicator as to a time period, choosing a single real-life princess to match Raya is a challenge. But the filmmakers did share that they took influence for Raya from two real-life warrior queens, the Trung sisters. Trung Trok and Trung Nai lived in what is now northern Vietnam around the year 14 CE. By that point, their homeland had been under the control of the Han Dynasty of China for over 200 years. The sisters were both in line for their father's noble title, and he made sure they were well-educated in literature and martial arts. 
the Han governor of the region, was a cruel tyrant. He had a disagreement with Trung Trok's husband and ordered his execution without trial. Trung Trok went to her sister and together they rose up in rebellion against the governor to avenge her husband's murder. The courageous pair rode into battle on elephants. People across the region, tired of living under abuse, took up arms and joined the cause. Chinese settlements were overrun and the government was chased out. Trong Truk became Vietnam's first and thus far only queen regnant. Trong Nai was her vice queen, but their rule only lasted three years. In the year 42, the emperor of China sent an army of 20,000 to take back the region. Trong Truk and Trong Nai were captured and executed. The Trong sisters are revered as symbols of independence in Vietnam. Statues and temples are dedicated to them. Numerous streets, schools, and the Hai Ba Trong district of Hanoi are named in their honor. They also have an annual holiday in February. Asha from the 2023 film Wish is not technically a princess. During production, she was rumored to be, and the trailer implied that she was the king's apprentice. Now that the film is out, it's clear that she is actually a commoner, but with close ties to the king and especially the queen of Rosas. Thus, Asha joins the still very lauded lineup of Disney heroines, including Alice, Esmeralda, Meg, Jane, and Mirabel. Let me know if you'd like to see a video on the history behind them. But unlike the other heroines, Asha is royalty adjacent. If the reviews and box office for Wish hadn't been so lukewarm, I could imagine a sequel in which Queen Amaya appoints Asha as her heir, thus creating her a princess. Mulan is also an imperial adjacent commoner, but she is now included in the official princess lineup. So it's quite possible that Asha will be appearing in the Disney parks and in Wreck-It Ralph style cameos along with the other Disney princesses. Plus, she is set in a fascinating historic era, and I planned this whole video around the movie's release, so I'm going to talk about it. The fictional island of Rosas is set off the Iberian Peninsula what is now Spain and Portugal. This is made evident by various cultural elements, particularly in the opening number, which includes flamenco dancing and Spanish instruments, including castanets. Asha starts the song by shouting, Hola, Shalom, Salem. Hello in Spanish, Hebrew, and Arabic, representing the three major ethnic groups present in the area in the Middle Ages. Through the rest of the film, these cultural elements took a back seat to over 100 references to previous Disney films, crammed in to celebrate the 100th anniversary of Walt and Roy Disney moving to California and founding their animation company in 1923. While these Easter eggs were fun to spot, it's a shame that the producers didn't spend more time researching and highlighting the culture the film is set in, as they have done with other recent movies. The architecture of Rosas resembles the Alhambra in Granada, Spain. A clear pinpointer of the era is Queen Amaya's Princess Leia-like hairstyle. This is called a crispin and was a popular headdress for European women in the late 1200s. Director Fawn Virasunthorn said that the film is set between the 12 and 1300s because, quote, that's kind of where all the cultures converged historically. During this era, the Iberian Peninsula was divided, with the Muslim Emirate of Granada in the south and various Christian kingdoms in the north. It's certainly true that people of many origins and races were all occupying the area in the Middle Ages. There was a good bit of cultural exchange and advances in science, art, and medicine. But there was also a great deal of war and religious discrimination, which was likely what King Magnifico had escaped on the mainland. In 1492, about 200 years after Wish is set, the precarious cultural balance came crashing down. Queen Isabella I of Castile and her husband, King Fernando II of Aragon, conquered Granada and drove most Jews and Muslims out of Spain. They launched the Spanish Inquisition to persecute non-Catholics who refused or were unable to leave. 150,000 people were tortured and 5,000 were burned at the stake. 
let's go back to the utopian world of Disney. The name Asha means hope or wish in Arabic. In fact, there were a number of real royal women from the time with the similar name of Aisha, meaning alive. The women of the Alhambra were well-educated and had more rights and influence than women in the rest of the medieval world. And they hailed from all over. The majority were Arab, but many were Berbers from Africa or Europeans. One royal woman who is a great match for Asha is Fatima bint Alamar. She was the daughter of Sultan Muhammad II. Because of the Islamic taboo against imagery of people, contemporary images of women of her time are near non-existent, so we don't know what she looked like. But we do know that she was highly educated in poetry, history, literature, and astronomy, though it's not recorded if she ever wished on a star. At 19, Fatima was married to her cousin, Abu Said. He was the governor of the city of Malaga. When her father died, her brother, Muhammad III, inherited the throne. Their younger half-brother, Nasir, born to one of their father's concubines, rebelled and overthrew Muhammad. Fatima and her husband led a rebellion and tried to put their son, Ishmael, on the throne instead. But when Sultan Nasir allied with the king of Castile, they were forced to stand down. Years later, after Fatima's husband died, she helped her grown son Ishmael engineer another rebellion against the Sultan. Many who were discontent joined his army as he marched to Granada. When he reached the capital, its inhabitants opened the gates for him. Nasir surrendered the Alhambra, and Ishmael was declared the new sultan. Queen Mother Fatima was his closest advisor and was gifted in politics. Ishmael was stabbed by his enemies and died in his mother's palace. Fatima secured the reign of her 10-year-old grandson, Muhammad IV. She acted as his regent, and her vision steered Granada into its greatest era. Fatima lived to the age of 90. A poet described her as the great pearl at the center of the dynasty's necklace. With so many fascinating historic eras and cultures yet to explore, I can't wait to see which new princesses will be added to the Disney pantheon next. Do you agree with my historic princess matches? Let me know in the comments. Want even more tea on history? Check out the History Tea Time podcast. You can now follow History Tea Time on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, comment your thoughts, and check out my other royal history videos. If you really want to help, please consider supporting me on Patreon. A link is in the description. Thank you for watching.